Welcome to Women's Leadership Today. We're your hosts, Michelle Myers and Nicolette Sarosky. Today we're doing something a little bit different. We'll be discussing how working mothers find work-life balance and navigate the challenges of today's working parents. First of all, I would like to introduce our guest panelist, Glo Mushran. Glo is the CCO of Next Gen, Next Gen Communications and mother of three. She started her career in traditional retail on the sales floor and has lived in all seats from sales associate to VP, but says the most important role she's had is being a learner, mentor, and friend. Blessed to have served so many and learned from them as well. Glow is also currently in the exciting process of developing a TED Talk on how to handle the curveballs life throws at you. Welcome, Glow. Thanks so much, Nicolette. I'm excited to be here. And we're excited to have you. Today we have three different working mom experiences. Personally, I am a new mom. My daughter is now two months old, 10 weeks, and I just returned from maternity leave in January at the beginning of the year. And I'm really excited to learn more about your guys' experience today. Michelle, can you first briefly describe what stage you are in both professionally and as a parent? Absolutely. And again, congratulations, Nicolette. We're so excited for you and your new bundle of joy. And you're just starting this exciting journey. So I remember those days. So wonderful. So you're so blessed. Yeah, so I've been... Uh, working, as you know, with Progressive Women's Leadership for almost 20 years now, which is actually older, I say, than my oldest child. I have a 12-year-old and a 15-year-old. And Glow, um, what about you? Can you sp share a little bit about your experience Absolutely. as well? Absolutely. So I am a uh, single mom. I have three amazing children. Uh, they are 24, 20, and 20. Um, so three, uh, I have twins, a boy and a girl, and my 24-year-old is, uh, is a girl. I have been in traditional retail. I spent probably the first part of my career, probably 15 years, um, working in every single seat. Started out as a stock associate in, um, in a limited brands company and worked my way up. Have spent the last 15 years in telecommunications, which is pretty phenomenal. And today I am the blessed to be the chief commercial officer of an amazing company called Next Gen Communications. Fantastic. Um, we're going to jump right into the questions, right? Because um, we always keep these episodes kind of short, but we have so much to talk about today. So I'm going to jump right in. Um, and Glow, I'm going to pose this first question to you. Um, in your experience, have you been treated or viewed differently in the professional space since becoming a mother? Uh, absolutely. And you know what? Some of it is um, amazing where you have partners and allies. So I can think about uh, a couple of companies I worked for in the very beginning of my career where um, it mostly um, other moms working in retail and uh, it was more of a partnership and family mentorship, right? It, they, they saw I had a new baby. They took me under their wing. They showed me, hey, here's a few things you should do differently than you're doing today, Glow, so that you can get that four or five hours of sleep. So when you open up the store, you can feel amazing. And, um, and then on the flip side, also where um, folks have um, spent time where they didn't understand right, what it's like to be that working mother and to um, have two hours of sleep and be nursing and then throwing your, your milk into a cabinet so that you can get back out on the sales floor so that you can get that next sale going, right? So really it's that balance. So in both instances, I think I learned a lot. I learned how to recognize when someone needs support and also how to, hey, maybe I don't want to say that because I know how that made me feel. And that's so interesting, you know, that you kind of experienced it both ways, the positive support and the and the negative, more negative experience of, of kind of um, being viewed as like, oh, I have to get back out there. I have to rush. Right. Um, so that's that's really cool that you have both of those experiences. Um, Michelle, what about you? Do you have um, were you? Did you experience being treated or viewed differently when you became a mother? Well, it's actually interesting. Not so much once I became a mother. Um, I feel like I had a lot of support there. And I was very fortunate to already be in a position with a lot of flexibility. And I was able to immediately uh, start working 
remotely and off site, so which wasn't very common at that time. Where I really found, I guess, attention or a difference was actually during my pregnancy. And it would get almost a little awkward sometimes. I would oftentimes be the only woman in a meeting. And I remember being, you know, very, very heavily pregnant, very much pregnant, and in a meeting one time. And, uh, you know, babies start to kick and move around and, you know, in and, and the stomach. And I remember the gentleman that was leading the meeting stopping mid sentence, looking at me and saying, did I just see your stomach move? That's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. And like a dozen eyes zooming on me and my stomach. Yikes. And I know I turn beet red, which I do. I'm, you know, I'm so fair. I team bright red, but you know, I mean, so it wasn't anything inappropriate. It was just a little uncomfortable. However, what was also interesting and not, not in a positive way for sure is I do remember I had one team member uh, that would make comments sometimes, like if I made a slight error or slightly misspoke, as we all do throughout the day, she would say, oh, that's due to your baby brain. That's mm -hmm. due to pregnancy brain. Mm -hmm. And it really tore me down. And I didn't understand because she was a working mom with two school age kids. I mean, she was basically where in her career where I am now, both her career and being, being a working mom. So it was interesting that she would kind of take those little digs and I never got, I probably should have approached her about it. Never did just, you know, you let those things go sometimes. So really any um, pushback I ever had was from a female colleague, uh, you know, never her ever ups, but again, very fortunate overall to work in a very supportive environment. That's awesome. Um, and you know, the company has been really supportive of me throughout my entire pregnancy too. I was, uh, you know, I've only had one pregnancy, so I only have one experience. Um, but you know, I was, I was very, very sick my entire pregnancy and I was so lucky to have the support and the flexibility um, from HR and from my team to be able to uh, switch from hybrid to full remote for a while. Um, and, you know, just just um, based on your reaction alone from the beginning of Michelle, I've kind of gotten that same reaction uh, since I've come back to. Everybody is so yeah. excited. Everybody wants to see pictures of the baby. Um, so luckily my experience is positive as well, um, even though I, I know that, you know, it's not always a, a positive experience for everyone um, and there is that kickback sometimes. So um, going on, uh, the next question is, in what ways did your expectations differ from the reality of becoming a working mother? Okay, and, and if you don't mind, I'll, I'll speak on this one first, uh, since I'm kind of the newest, the newest member of the oh, club absolutely. here. Um, <laughs> I thought personally, I was like, very, very naive, right, going into this. I thought I was going to be super mom. I was like, oh, my life's not going to be much different. I'm just going to add in taking care of a baby. Um, <laughs> I love that. We love that you thought that. I love yeah. that you thought that. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly, that was exactly my mindset. I mean, conversations I was having before I actually had the baby, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be chomping at the bit to get back to work. I'm going to be so bored during maternity leave, all this stuff, right? It could not have been further from the truth, right? I am two months in, I'm still adjusting to becoming almost an, a whole new person. I have an entirely new set of priorities um, and goals for my life. Um, and it's, it's, it's been difficult to kind of adjust to that, that newness, that becoming a, a different person. That's something I really have never experienced. So that was kind of my experience, uh, expectation versus reality. And Michelle, I'd like to hear your experience next on this. Yeah. I laugh because I see myself in you, <laughs> you know, those early days. It's like, I oh, just a baby. They're only like this big, right? How much? <laughs> <laughs> they just sleep and eat, right? Yeah, you like... know, and I was really one of, um, the first of my friends to, to have a baby because most of my friends were other, you know, young working women like I was back then. That's that my friends I knew from work or through their friends or networking, whatnot. So I just really didn't have a good um, baseline for that reality. But, you know, one thing that's really amazing is you learn 
how much you can do with so little, whether that be mm-hmm. so little time, so little sleep. You really, you really can amaze yourself in a way. Um, you can, to, you can learn, you learn how to dig deep and do what needs to get done, whether that's caring for that brand new infant, whether that's writing that project proposal. Um, you can do it, but again, like you were saying, you expect that you're going to have the same level of energy and the same time and capacity that you did before. The reality is you don't, but, but we learn, we adapt. Glow, how about you? Yeah. You know, I think you said it so well, Michelle. I think my reality, uh, kind of slapped me in the face (laughs) because I had always been career, uh, I, you know, I'll, I'll be honest. And when I first had my first daughter, Madeline, I kept that poor baby in a bubble. I was so afraid I was going to break her. And I put all this extra stress on myself to be the perfect mom, the perfect wife, the perfect parent, the everything had to be perfect. And it quickly slapped me in the face to say, Hey, you know what? There are days I am going to be the best freaking mother out there. I'm going to rock this. And there are days my company's going to be like, my goodness, that woman is a beast. She can do anything. And then there are days my husband's going to be like, okay, come over here, girlfriend. I need you to take me to dinner, right? And you, I had to give myself the grace to be like, you know what? Today's the day I'm going to be the best employee ever. And tomorrow I'm going to be the best mother ever. And next weekend I'm going to be the best wife ever. But being able to give yourself the grace to say, I cannot always be the best at everything. So I'm going to pick and choose based on what's most important in that moment. That's a lesson I honestly crafted throughout the years and finally feel like I've learned and I'm 24 years into this gig, right? So, uh, you know, so I would say that it's really important for new moms to give yourself some grace. That to me is a lesson I wish I had learned in my 20s when I had my first child. I just I just learned it on 52. So get ahead of that game. Go do it. And, and Glo, do you see similar experiences to ours um, in the women that you coach and mentor as well? A- absolutely. You know, I, I had a conversation with a mentoring group just a few weeks ago. And one of the women, you know, was panicked. I mean, literally stressing out because the next morning was the second grade bake sale. And she was like literally talking to me at 10 o'clock at night, churning out a hundred cupcakes, like, like a fiend had just finished a meeting at work, just got a recent promotion. And I was like, hold on, take a minute, take a beat. I said, give me a second. I said, you know what? If I had, could do this all over again, I did the same thing when Madeline was in second grade and the twins were going into kindergarten and I would have gone and found the mother that was working from home. That mother that maybe was a stay at home mom, which is a full time job and has a side hustle to bake. And I would have said to her, Hey, can I pay you to bake those hundred cupcakes? Right? Let me help another mom along. Um, let me do that first before I put myself in the state of I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I'm not delivering the right, mom brand experience because every one of our mom your brand is different than my brand right and that's okay that's okay so yeah that if i could do it all over again i would have done that and that's what the advice i gave her and she found three moms in her network all who are doing something from home because they're stay-at-home moms and they want a side hustle and now she's like okay now i can actually enjoy my kids saturday morning versus staying up to 4 a.m to bake cupcakes for the sale. And I love how you coached her to pivot that. You didn't just say, stop what you're doing, run to the store, buy the cupcakes. I love that you encouraged her to find other moms within her network and not only give herself a break in that grace that you talked about, but also supporting other other moms. I love that because that's so important. I think that's where we fail so many times is to support one another in this mission we call parenting. Agreed. Agreed. My uh, cup for coffee says parenting style is survivalist, 
right? You just got to do what you got to do. And there are times that you have to build that network for yourself that allows you to feel like you're still doing the right thing for you and your family, but also the right thing for you as a human being, because stress is, you know, not good, right? And it's really important when, when we feel stress, our babies feel it doing both roles too when we feel stressed not only does it affect our our children you know and and I I know from experience our our partners as well right and the rest of our family um but also like you can feel it at work you know what I mean like I can tell when I'm stressed when I'm not bringing a hundred percent of myself uh to work right and and I'm bringing that stress into work and I don't always mean to but it just kind of spills out I mean we've been in meetings right Michelle where you're like hey are you okay I can tell you know you're a little quiet today um which you know again that support uh I it, you know it's really important to check up but that stress that that you bring comes into all aspects of your life. It's not just like, oh, I'm really stressed at home, so you know now my home life is affected. So it's so important to take care of yourself. Um, and actually, so I, you, you know that is one of the questions I was going to ask too. How how do you make that time to take care of yourself? As, as a new mom, I'm finding a huge struggle right now of of making room for myself. I feel like I've kind of gotten lost in the, in the mm-hmm. weeds, right? Like I'm I'm now doing this full-time job as a mother I'm now doing this full-time job in my career and you know how do I find the hours in the day to also make time to be the person I was before or even just to be the new person I am to discover who I'm becoming right I feel like I'm, I'm kind of lost in that um Michelle do you have anything to say to that yeah absolutely I mean you're going to feel that way for a while that's just the reality of it it's such a huge adjustment and especially with a new baby, they are literally changing every single day and you have to reset every single day. Um, So there will be, it will take some time to see where Nicolette fits in to this this baby equation, right? Um, But you will get there, you will get there. I mean, I remember being at this stage, if I could just get a shower (laughs) at the day, uh, between work and all the baby stuff, that was a big win. Just just the basic a shower, um, sit down for a real meal. Like those little tiny wins were amazing. So you really have to dial back your expectations um, and just kind of navigate your way through those weeds. It will take time, but you will. And as you go along, you'll start to first, it'll be you find time for a shower. And then maybe you'll even find, pardon me, find time to watch 10 minutes of a TV show, 15 minutes of a book, a magazine, um, and it'll start to grow day by day and you'll, it'll come, but there certainly isn't one magic formula, unfortunately, um, for that. How about you, Glow? What was your, your survival technique? Yeah. So, you know what? I, I... (laughs) <laughs> is I'm a parenting survivalist. I love my three babies more than anything. So I will tell you that there were a couple of things that I learned pretty quickly. And one of them was that um, I easily became sucked into doing an awesome job at home in making sure that Madeline lived in that bubble and then um, doing an awesome job at work, making sure I didn't miss a beat. And you know what I missed? I missed myself, right? I... I started to not take care of the things that matter most to me. Like, okay, I need a walk. I need to go outside. And I had to find a way to bring her along. And then eventually when I had the twins, okay, guess what? We're walking. Do they like to walk for 45 minutes? No. But you know what? (laughs) Got a big triple stroller at one point and everybody went out, right? Because that 45 minutes gave me the mental clarity to not sit in front of our laptop, to not do laundry, to not do the things that I would naturally gravitate to do because I'm an activator. I like to keep busy. So how do you find that? And and that was a lesson I learned from a friend. She said, you know what? You are so, you're, you're wound tight, my friend. You need to chill a little bit. And the way I did that was for walking. So again, it's what's your brand. What I'm most impressed about, you know, your generation, Nicolette, is that you're willing to say, hey, I need a little more quality of life or, hey, I need to find that balance. So um, and it's impressive because I will tell you, my generation doesn't do a great job at that. I can speak for myself as a woman in that generation. I, I'm a workhorse. I'll work, work, work. 
Um, so finding that balance is important. Silly things like, hey, I'm going to go to drive to Starbucks. I'm going to spend $4.87 on that coffee, and I'm going to sit there for 20 minutes and read one chapter of a book. It seems like there's never enough time unless you make the time. So, so that's what I did. I made the time first to walk, and then I made the time to prioritize my partner and make sure that he and I went out to dinner once a month, and then I made the time to do those little things that became really big, important things as the kids got older. I think you're right, Glenn. I think that's a good point. It's like making that time. Sometimes you almost have to schedule that time for yourself, Correct. like that right. Starbucks run, that sitting for yeah. 20 minutes in your car. Um, I mean, if you have to, you even put it in your calendar, uh, put in your shared calendar for, uh, you know, your, your partner, your coworkers to, to see, but it, it's like scheduling a meeting at work or scheduling a doctor's appointment. You, you've got to carve out that, that me time for I sure. Couldn't agree with that more, right? We'll find white space on our calendar to take on that extra project work, or you'll find a way to get that one extra load of laundry done, right? So that you don't have to deal with it Saturday morning, but will you find, will you make that priority um, yourself and say, I got to find that 45 minutes um, to do what's what's good for me? And that that's a lesson I, I hope you take heart from folks who maybe didn't do it and do it for yourself now. I wish I had started sooner. Yeah, I agree. I absolutely agree. <laughs> I'm definitely going to try that too, because I noticed that like, I'll, I'll just do extra work because I'll be like, well, there, I, I don't have anything else to do right now. I might as well, you know, the baby's napping. I might as well get back on and start working again. But like, I, I make the time, you know, for, for doctor's appointments and stuff like that. I, I need mm -hmm. to be making time to schedule some time for myself too. like, put it like, like you guys said, put it on the calendar, block it out, tell people around you, like, I, I can't do that right now. I have, you know, this scheduled. Um, I'm going to definitely try that out because I think that's going to help a lot. So that that is it's, it's so important. I can tell you, I worked for a company. Uh, they were amazing. Um, I flew a lot when the twins and Madeline were in the, you know, grammar school age. I flew a lot for work and I blocked off because I was in Seattle. I was on your coast, uh, your time zone um, <laughs> many times during the week. And I blocked off 430 to 530 so that I could say goodnight to my kids, I could read them a book, I could do those things. And you know what? I had to get the leadership courage to say to some, to, I can't make that meeting, cause, and here's why. And you know what? I got a lot more respect for it than I did get ridicule. People were like, okay, don't schedule, Glow's not gonna show up before 30 to 5.30. It's bedtime, bath time, and, and saying hi to the kids. And um, that is super important. If, if I was willing to do that during a work day, you should be able to willing to do that for yourself every day. And, and that actually goes really well into, into my next question here um, about setting boundaries. So setting boundaries is a really hot topic right now, especially when it comes to work. Um, have either of you had to make compromises either at work or at home to accommodate both roles? Um, and how do you go about setting those boundaries, right? Glo, you said it takes a lot of courage. So how do you find that courage? Or do you have any other tips or tricks for, you know, being assertive, for setting those boundaries at home or at work? Yeah, you know, I, you know, I was blessed uh, with a partner that was amazing, right? So um, I always say at home, you have to, whatever your village looks like, they have to be your biggest cheerleader and your biggest supporter. Mm -hmm. So whether it's friends or family, I, I, you know, or or just the neighbor next door, right? Being able to to do that is important. So one of the things that I did pretty early on was ask for help, right? Because uh, you know there were other moms that could do the drop off, maybe on the nights that I couldn't. But then on Saturday, I was pretty much always home on Saturday, and if they wanted to go do their Christmas shopping, I'm like, send the kids over happy to do that so it's really finding that that and setting that for yourself to say i i cannot do this and that's okay who can help me do this and how can i help them so that was something that i had to learn first and you know but also setting the boundaries that 
for that mom, maybe I wouldn't watch her kids every Saturday because sometimes she would just send them over and having to <laughs> and having to say like her, hey, listen, I have plans with my kids this afternoon, and then just preemptive strikes. So letting her know, hey, uh, hey, I know the kids love to play together every Saturday. The family and I are going out this afternoon, or we have uh, we have a family function today. Just wanted to give you he- a heads up because if the kids ring the doorbell, I might send them home, and she would be like, oh, no problem. I'm not gonna have them be there. So. You know, it's it's that courage to say, okay, this is what I can do today, and this is how I'm going to manage it. And then on the on the work front, it's being honest, right? I've had a couple of employees come to me, um, new moms, and say, hey, I can't do this, right? And then having that honest conversation because the relationship is important to say, okay, what will the business accept and what it won't accept, and then helping them navigate through that process, whatever that looks like. Right. And I think that's so important that you're you're honest and open and transparent in a way that still allows you to authentically do the job you want to do, whether it be at home or or at work. And, and Glow, I I think you're absolutely right. And I think a really important point that you touch up, you touched upon in a couple of aspects is asking for help. Uh, one, you know, going to your your director, your manager, whomever, and asking for that time, you know, setting those boundaries like you did, you know, for 4.30 to 5.30. And of course that's going to look different for everyone, but taking that initiative and being transparent and honest, I think, of course I can't speak for everyone, but I think in most cases, people are going to want to be supportive of you. They're going to want to help you. They've already invested this time in you as you know as an employee they want you to succeed and by you being transparent and coming and making that asking like i can do this i just need you know this time or this scheduling in order to make that happen you know will that work is so important but for some reason as women i think so often it's so difficult for us to ask for help and glow you also talked about asking other moms for help and that's so important and i don't know if you struggled with that but i know that has been something i have really really had to learn to do even today it's a struggle for me is ask for help and i have no idea why that's such a struggle but i even remember recently uh being out on a hike with some of my girlfriends and, you know, just sharing how I was frustrated. How I was trying, like my husband was going to be out of town. And I was trying to figure out how I was going to get some of the kids here and there and whatnot. And one of them said, well, why don't you just ask any of us for help? You know, any of us would step in and, and help you drive one of the kids somewhere. And it, and it was just like a revelation, like, oh yeah, I can do that. Where on the other hand, I would have, I would happily help anyone out with anything like that. But then for me to ask for that, such a challenge. And I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only, only one out there like that, but it's definitely such an important skill to ask, um, from the get go. Yeah, no, Michelle, you're totally right. And I didn't do it very well in the beginning. And now I'm not afraid to ask for support. And I think as, as working mothers, um, it is because this perception is we multitask better than everyone else. We mm-hmm. are, we're, we're, we're a beast. We're amazing. People are in awe of how we do it, right? Yet we're going home at night and, and you're pulling your hair out. Like, how am I going to get all this done? Right? So it is really critical that um, we learn that skill and we evolve that where we don't have to be superwoman. You said it, Nicola, at the beginning, like, I'm going to do everything. This is going to be amazing. <laughs> Well, you know what? Um, grace, right? If we remember that, I, I can't do everything. And then there's people around us that, Michelle, now that you ask for help, they will ask you because it's we've given each other permission to to ask. And also talking about um, boundaries, Nicolette, um, you know, you have to learn to let things go to, you know, the laundry is always going to be there. It doesn't matter how much you do it it's always going to be there and the nice 
I know we've gone from we've gone from uh, once a week to every other yeah. day. <laughs> if it's every other day, you're doing good. And, <laughs> and actually, that comes directly from uh, a Facebook post in one of my mom groups that I saw the other day. Someone was asking, a new mom was asking, "How do I study on top of all this laundry?" And all the veteran moms were like, "You don't. <laughs> you yeah, don't. Yeah. You know, you don't worry about about it at this point." But we put so much pressure on ourselves to be that superwoman. We have to have the house spotless. We have to, you know, come to work in full, you know, full makeup, full, full suit. We just set that bar so high for ourselves. And I'm sure that goes back to, uh, you know, decades of struggle that, uh, you know, women have faced, you know, to get the foot in the door, to get that seat at the table. And we want to hold on to it, you know, so tight and we think we have to be perfect or what I now call um, Pinterest perfect. <laughs> right. Exactly. And I am so far from that in everything. Right. And again, it goes back to grace. Like sometimes I'm not the best boss and I should do things differently and be better. And sometimes I'm not the best mom and I should do different things and be better. And that's okay. Right. You got to give yourself the grace and learn. Right. I always say I'm a learner because Hey, I'm never going to do that again. I made that mistake. Okay. Like, okay, good. I won't do it again. Yeah. And it's, it's really great. The, the, talking about grace and about accepting things that you can't change, right? There's going to be laundry. There's no changing it. Right. Um, that is, that's something that I really struggle with personally. I've struggled with that my whole life, accepting things you can't change. You know, I have, I have a little bit of control <laughs> issue. I, I'm like, I, I want to be able to control everything all the right. time. So that acceptance is something that I'm really working hard on, on learning. And I was just having a conversation um, with my mom the other day, uh, talking about grace, especially where I told her, you know, I feel like I'm a little bit of a failure because I feel like I can't bring a hundred percent of myself to everything I need. I, I can't give a hundred percent to myself, to my baby, to my husband, to my work all at the same time. Like there's only a hundred percent of me. So how am I supposed to give a hundred percent to all those different roles? Right. Um, and, you know, I always go to my mom for advice. You never really stop being a mom, right? She's a grandma now, but she's still yeah, my mom at the absolutely. end of the day. Um, and you know, when I had I had posed some questions or I had I posed the opportunity to ask questions out to my network um, when it comes to this topic because it's it's very relatable. There a lot of my friends are mothers, um, and a lot of people had this feeling as well, right? And and uh, referred to it as mom mm -hmm. guilt, right? A lot of women talk about mom guilt. This this feeling that that you're not doing enough, right? Um, and I, I'm not one to to um, give half an effort to anything. Um, to find a nice way to say it. <laughs> um, so, so for me, it really, really hits home. Um, Glow, have you experienced, you know, in, in your in your career as as a working mother, have you experienced that mom guilt? A hundred percent. You know, um, <clears throat> I am a uh, hundred percent committed to my children every day, all day. And if so, if they needed me in a moment, I would drop the ball, right? And I would say whatever I was working on was not as as much of a priority as them. But there were several times, especially when my girls were in dance, that, um, you know, I had to prioritize a work meeting or I got stuck on a flight somewhere. And I just felt like I was the absolute worst mother in the world, right? I'm not doing enough for them. Or, hey, I prioritize this work thing, this work thing over my children and I'm bad, right? Or I prioritize my, my work over something else that was going on and hey i'm not good so you know one of the ways that i found uh, to uh, deal with that mom guilt was to like step back and just take a look like take stock of what did what were all the things i did this week in effort to help my children to help my career to help my spouse and then i look back i'm like i'm a freaking rock star are you kidding me like I did makeup over the phone with my husband putting on eyeliner to get ready for a dance competition. Are you freaking kidding me? Who else could have talked a 44 year old man how to put a cat eye on a girl to go out on? Like, who else could have, you know what? You know, I could have done that, right? So it's, you know, it's setting back and saying, you know what? Of course, could I have been better? There's so many things I would do. If I could do it over again, of course you can do it. But you know what? Um, 
I, I, there's an expression like life is like a photo, right? You learn from the negatives, right? So you learn from the negatives. So uh, it's remembering that. So every time you feel guilty about, hey, I didn't get this done or that done, sit back, grab a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, uh, whatever you, whatever your drink of choice is and say, okay, what did I get done this week? And you're going to sit back and go, if that was any other mother, I'd say you're a freaking rock star. And remember that because you know what? If you got the shower, you're a rock star. If you if you were able to eat a whole meal with a fork and a knife and you're not shoving food in your mouth in the middle of a conference call, you're a rock star. And I think that that is something that we forget to, to remind ourselves of. But if another mother came to you, you would say to them, you're freaking amazing. Are you kidding? Look what you did. You did the sequence on that concert. You helped your husband put a cat eye on the on a phone while you're in, in getting ready for dance competition, right? You took three you took three hours to go and find what they needed to show up for that party. So the perfect gift was given. Like I, I don't think we remember all the amazing things we do, and that would be my recommendation. Stop guilting, start recognizing, and remember you're a rock star. And to support that advice, Glow, that's something I j I've recently learned in therapy. My therapist said, you know, at the end of the day, I want you to sit down and I want you to, you know, pick yeah. out wins from the mm. day because it can it can be so hard to like you get lost in in mm. those negative experiences. Sometimes you don't rem you don't take the time mm. to celebrate those small wins, right? To to ha remember those positive right. experiences, which we have every day, right? No day is 100% bad. No day is 100% good. But it's so important to remember those good things. And and I like to take, you know, a, a win from each kind of aspect of my life. I like to take a personal win, a win as, as a mom, and then a win for my job as well. Um, so 100% supported uh, on that advice. That's been really super helpful for me personally. Um, how about you, Michelle? Have you have you heard, experienced the mom oh, guilt? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, and it's kind of like what Glow said, we will be so quick to give other moms in those situations that that grace and tell them they're they're rocking it, they're killing it. But when we turn that lens on ourselves, we can't give ourselves that same grace, that same freedom and forgiveness. And there's been so many times, honestly, when I've, you know, still years later felt guilty over some silly little thing like maybe I didn't make it to see my son in his fifth grade class little play or something and you ask them about it and they don't remember um you know and if it's mom or if it's dad putting the cat eye on or auntie or grandma or mom's best friend they don't care it's getting done they're they're being taken care of they're they're being loved but it is it is a challenge. It is a reality. It is hard. But I think with time and a little perspective, we can learn to uh, let it go a little bit. But it's it's like anything else. It does take practice to give ourselves that grace. And grace is a word that we keep using it again and again. But I think it's so important here. We really do need to give ourselves um that that space for sure you know I, I think it's important to recognize also you know, I'm on a I'm on a mom's group as well Michelle and it's it's all moms with similar duties okay. so we're all kind of in the same exact stage right and it's important to remember uh, and this is another discussion I've had about how people kind of on especially on the internet show mm -hmm. the best sides of themselves mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. the best parts of their day um, we like to brag right so it you, you, when you go on these groups sometimes the whole page is just filled with moms being like, look at me rocking it. Look at how good my, my kid's doing. You know, I just got promoted in my job and I'm only two months postpartum. You know, it's because we're bragging. But it's, it's important to remember that those moms are also having, you know, bad days. <laughs> it looks like they're it looks like they're killing it every day. But, you know, we're all experiencing a similar experience. We have we have bad days, we have good days. Um, especially if you're if you're active online, it's important to remember that people are showing the best sides of themselves. Why why would they put anything else up? Right? But um, and going back to what you said, Glow, about getting that network, mm -hmm. especially of other mm -hmm. mothers, because having that p close personal network um, instead of just kind of being a face on the Internet 
gives you access to those experiences because with our friends we're a little bit more open we're a little bit more supportive um, and I think it's important to recognize and to be able to discuss those hard days as well and the struggles we're having kind of like what we're doing yep. here on the podcast today yep. right um, it's important for for us to discuss these uh, the negative experience as well as the positive um, so that we can all re recognize that we're all going through mm -hmm. it and, right? and no one's life is perfect I mean you said it so so well the reality yeah. is you're gonna have adversity you might lose a job, you might lose a spouse, you might lose a best friend, you might fail on a project, right? It doesn't mean you're a failure. It means like, hey, I learned from those negatives. Stuff happens in your life. And I think it's so important that you surround yourself. I keep saying this. My three best friends have been my three best friends for almost my entire life, right? And um, every day that I doubt myself, they're the first ones to say, you're a freaking rock star. Settle down, sister. Go get, go get it, right? Okay, so you made a mistake. Big deal. Move on, right? And I think that network becomes uh, that support system. And then you're going to have networks that ebb and flow through your stages in life, right? If your child decides they're going to be in uh, space camp, you all of a sudden have a new space camp network. And then if you decide that you're going to go and you're going to join hiking, I just started golfing, right? So who knew that I would actually really like it? It's so much fun. But I, you know, I have no one to play with. So I joined a ladies group and I met two or three other women that are like me, similar stages in their life, that now I have a new network at 52 of people that, uh, you know, one of the, one of the women in the group is, is a 27 year old brand new mom, right? And she uses golf as her, her me time, right? She goes out and we go to the range Saturday morning, the kick out a few balls and you know do what we got to do and you know take our swings and we laugh and we have fun for 45 minutes then she goes back to the baby right so it's really really uh that that network becomes almost a lifeline and you will have different networks throughout your life you'll have that core family best friend group but then you're going to meet another all these different groups of moms that are in the same place you are at the same time doing the same activities and it's tapping into that, right? It's really hard to say to yourself, well, I have three best friends. I don't really need more friends. You need a village of friends because the dance mom friends were different than the soccer mom friends were different, right? So just remember that, right? You need a network and some of them may become your best friends or they may be the friends that you have that you both lean on each other during that phase of your kid's life. And that community is so important. And the nice thing is, you know, with, um, you know, Facebook and these different apps and these different groups and, and meet up and whatnot, we have so many opportunities to meet other uh, women who are in a similar space or have a similar interest and go good for that mom that you mentioned uh, with a brand new baby joining that golf group, taking that 45 minutes for herself to do something that's that's wonderful yeah and you hear. know what what was great was her her partner her husband was like go right because listen i i think my kids call me mama glow so i find that it, you know they're like yeah go hang out with mama glow because these kids you they're young right i'm twice their age but it was amazing to see her say, okay, I'm gonna find that 45 minutes. And that's all we take. We've gone out twice, now spring's gonna come, but hey, it, and for her, if that time is 7 a.m. on a Saturday, cause that's when she can do it, I'm in a different stage, I'm in a different season. I can do that at 7 a.m., right? If she said 4.45, I could do that too, right? So um, finding people that can also fit in with what you have going on, and are, are happy to be that support for you really matters. And I said before that I had um, kind of posed the opportunity for uh, my network to ask, ask questions for this panel. Um, and one, one of the questions that came up and I, I thought was really interesting, a d kind of a different take on, on what we've been talking about. Um, for moms who have stepped back from working, they took some time off um, to be that stay-at-home mom to really focus on, on their home life, and now they're looking to start re-entering the workforce. Um, there's some feelings there of not being qualified because now you lack uh, maybe years of experience, right? So, um, and, and Glow, you're, you're a coach and a mentor, so do, do you have any tips um, for moms like that trying to get back in and how to deal with that feeling of lack of experience? 
Yeah, a hundred percent. And I have a really good friend who did this, who um, just landed an amazing job, right? And as I was going through, uh, you know, practicing, like, hey, practice your. Let's talk about. Let me. I'm going to interview. Let's see how that goes. One thing that came up really loud and clear is they forgot how awesome they were. She forgot to mention during the six years she was on hiatus, she's been the chair of the committee at her high school for boosters and she's doing fundraising and she forgot to know she, Hey, by the way, you manage a, a, almost a half a million dollar budget for the school district to do what you need to do. And she forgot, Hey, do you remember you were top performer in your field and you have been excellent at everything you've done for the last six years? So, you know, reminding her how the, the confidence, uh, I keep saying the word rock star. You're a freaking rock star. Anyone would be lucky to have you. Look at your multitasking skills. Look at the way you've managed a budget. You didn't get paid a penny. Look what you've done for that booster club. And and those are the types of recommendations I give to anyone that I'm talking to, right? Lots of folks today, um, lots of moms have chosen to take a step back and good for you, right? Lots of moms have chosen to work their career and good for you, right? It, it doesn't matter what seat you sit in. It is about the the journey. And what did you learn during that six, six year hiatus? And what could you practically apply? I called it, uh, call it a lot. You have transferable skills that are marketable and that are needed in a, an environment today. And, you know, uh, we finished, she had been working, uh, you know, she had been looking for several months we finished, um, you know, re you know, really talking about like you need to promote the things you've done and the things you continue to do over the last six years. And she landed an amazing job. And I just had someone two weeks ago who uh, just coming back from the workforce for just for the last few years. And she landed the next role up because you know what? During those few years that she was off, she's been doing so much for the school district and the PTA and like president of this and vice president of that and chair secretary of the funding committee. And she's like, wow, Glow, I didn't even consider that all I've done during this time has helped me get ready for not the job I was in, but the one above it. And she got it. And I was, again, because she's a rock star. Yeah, I think that's so true, Glow, that women really forget all the amazing things that they're doing uh, while taking that, that time away. Like, great example there, perhaps they served on the school PTA, um, and that's no small fee. I know I've I've done it. It was almost like a, a second it, part-time. It's, like it's a job. Part -time. It's a job. It's it, it very was. critical it, women it, around it you saying, I don't really like that letter. Um, let's update the font. And, right, like, People who, are, who want everything to be excellent because all, as moms, we want everything to be excellent. Yeah, or maybe you were a, a Girl Scout leader. Um, you know, you, you ran the bake sale. You helped design the costumes for the school play. So many skills that we use in parenting are transferable to the workplace. And not a lot of women um, are able to make that connection or have a coach like, like you, Glow to help them make that connection. And they feel like I haven't done anything for the last two, four, six, ten 10 years. And it couldn't be further from the truth. So you need to really look at what you're doing from a new perspective, a whole new lens. And you have skills. You absolutely have skills that employers would be so honored to, Agreed. to have. Agreed. Sure. Like I said to someone the other day, Okay, you have been out of the workforce for six years. What have you been doing? Well, she's doing the PTA, she's doing a couple other things. But you know what she's been doing? She's also been, you know, taking care of other kids at, in her home, right? She's been helping other moms out, doing this. It, it ended up as, hey, I'm just going to help one mom. And then three moms came up and then a teacher needed some help. And so she's like, okay, I'll do that. And I'm like, you conflict manage, you time manage, you control attitudes all day long. You could totally sit in one of these boardrooms and give feedback on something and not offend anyone because you do this all day long. You do this all day long. And when she said that, she's like, you're right. I manage the mom relationships. I manage the children relationships. I manage the school relationships. You know what? Relationship building, transferable skill. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. Project management right there, right? She's a six. Yeah. She's a black belt <laughs> six sigma as far as I'm concerned, right? Right? Oh, wow. Yeah, right? absolutely. Because <laughs> yeah. I know I couldn't do I couldn't do what she does. I could not do it. It's just that is not my that's not me. Right. And I look at what she does. I'm like, I'm in awe of you. You are amazing. Being a mom is kind of like an advanced course in soft skills. Isn't exactly. It? Oh, absolutely. Communication. Yeah. <laughs> like <a> Conflict management. <laughs> right. Yep. And we are we are uh, coming up to the end of our time here, guys. But I do want to give you one last chance to kind of throw out any any last minute tips or tricks you might have. Um, let's start with you, Michelle. Anything you want to say to wrap us up? Well, sure. I'll reemphasize, like I said before, you know, uh, making time for yourself. And sometimes that's literally putting time in your calendar for yourself. That might sound silly, but sometimes that's what it takes. And we also talked about the good and the bad of social media. Um, it can be a wonderful way to connect with a community of people who are in a similar season of life. But sometimes it's also good. I've learned this from personal experience. Sometimes it's also good to put the phone down and take a break from it because it can set unrealistic expectations for our ourselves. We're not all going to be that Pinterest perfect um, mom with that birthday party with all the handmade decorations and cupcakes are are we so we've got to give ourselves that that grace how about you glow what are your your final uh, words of wisdom you know for us? I would say you're a rock star remember that and every time you feel like you're not take stock in everything you've done the last week and you'll remind yourself like hey uh, I may not be perfect but I'm killing it and I can continue to do it right and then I would just say you know what don't be afraid to ask for support, right? Whether that be through your work environment, whether it be through your personal network and friends, um, and, you know, put yourself out there um, and to be authentic and um, do only what you can do because no one can do it better than you and no one can do it. No one can change the way you look at yourself. So remember, you're a rock star. Fantastic. I love that. Uh, this has been really helpful to me personally. Um, it's been great to hear your experiences. Um, and we'd love to hear the um, experiences of our listeners as well. Um, if you want to reach out to us on, on Facebook, on Instagram, uh, Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn, we're on all kinds of different networks, uh, Progressive Women's Leadership. And tell us about your own experiences, uh, what you got out of this um, panel, and, and if, you know, any topics that you'd like to hear for, towards the future. Um, that is all the time we have today. We do release two episodes every month. Um, you're not going to want to miss a single one. You can watch us on YouTube, listen to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, almost anywhere podcasts can be found. And like I said, go ahead and follow us on social media um, and drop those comments. Um, we want to hear from you, definitely. Um, so thank you so much to all our listeners. Thank you, Glow, for joining us today. Um, and thank you, Michelle, as well, for your experiences. Thank you, ladies. This has been an honor to participate in this. Thank you so much. Thank you again. And thank you, Glow. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for listening. Progressive Women's Leadership is passionate about providing the best tools to help you reach your fullest potential. Visit us today at ProgressiveWomensLeadership.com for access to workshops, articles, e-guides, and much more to help you further develop your skills and advance your career.